You will watch Linux Gamecast Weekly. You will subscribe to our RSS feeds. You will banish your Windows gaming rig in favor of Linux. Yes, master. Yes. No, not you, you idiot. Uh, uh, frack it. Let's go. Coming up on this Linux Gamecast Weekly, Savage XR touches 1.0, Relics of Anaroth is in Alpha, Carmack gets approval for the GPL of Doom 3 BFG, and we also talk about crowdfunding, Games into Freedom. Let's go. Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, your weekly podcast that covers Linux gaming news, reviews, and basically whatever the hell we come up with. And joining me, as always, Mr. J. How's it going, man? Oh, it's going. It's going? You look... Something's different. I... I, Yes. Did did, did you get your eyebrows waxed? Oh yeah, I did get my eyebrows waxed. Ah. I'm, I'm trying to go, I'm trying to go for that Vulcan look, but I need to get them pointed up. Yeah, that's pretty nice, man. I, I I like it. But you do look fantastic. You got a new camera, right? Uh yeah, I did. I picked up a creative live cam something or other. This guy. Either way, man. And- it- Really looks nice. Chat HD. I mean, that's you don't want to do your standard HD chat. No, I want to. I want to do my live exclamation point HD chat. And we had a bit of um, technical difficulties, um, not with the recording today. It just set us back a bit because it's something that I think we need to point out more often. This is, to the best of my knowledge, the only. AV experience that you're going to get that not only is produced and recorded end to end on Linux, it's also kind of good. Hmm? Kind of. Sort of. Yeah, you know, it's one of those 50 50 things. We, we, you know what? F for effort. Yeah. We, we really get an F for effort on that. I completely agree. But let's go ahead and start out with what we've been up to and i've heard that you got a case of blue balls yes i got on at your behest i purchased a set of yoga balls to replace my standard desk chair and i'm going through a bit of adjustment period but on the bright side i can bounce so if you're wondering what the hell i'm doing throughout the recording i'm working out my nervous tics by bouncing on a ball see he does it too yeah, you see, I rarely bounce. I've been sitting on blue balls for years. It's just kind of a, you know, I'm stationary at this point, but you go the, through the your growing pains. still there for me, so I'm yeah. going to keep bouncing. You still got some back pain, something like that, because I remember my back it's... killed me. Oh, yeah. No, it, there, there's a bit of an adjustment period. I'm still stretching the ball out, but I think, I think this was the last day of ball stretching, because it hasn't really been deflating at all, so... Cool. I think it's about uh, done. But speaking of balls, I hear you have a story involving them, too. Well, it's a different type of balls, and that's sports balls. Now, a lot of people I know, and especially, I'd say, in the last five or six years, I know people that are tied in with tech and also a bit of a sports fan. One thing I do like to keep track of is what's going on with my adopted um, collegiate team, the Georgia Bulldogs. And I tried to watch a game Saturday, and you know what? It didn't work out very well. Not at all. Do you ever watch um, any type of sports ball? No. Being Canadian, I'm occasionally subjected to the sports puck. Ah, the national pastime. Yes. Actually, lacrosse is our national pastime, and that uses a ball, but close enough. That's damn frightening. But I wanted to watch it, and one thing that I have to commend that, you know, they're finally getting the message is, never is the question asked if I'm going to watch the game. I'm going to watch the game. And ESPN3 
which to their credit, much like CBS, I'll give them credit, broadcast a lot of games uh, online. Just You can watch them on your tablet or whatever, and I'll get to the tablet bit in a moment. But I went to watch it on my Arcos 10-inch tab, installed the app, installed Air, and guess what? <laughs> yes. What? Guess. Blackout. Internet blackout. Now, oh no. How does an internet blackout work? I, mm. Well, you see, when an executive and a really stupid idea love each other very, very much. Hmm. Yeah. I, I'm, 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 I'm going to leave the rest to your imagination, but then uh, why don't you tell us how that went? I'll tell you exactly how that went. The first thing I wanted to do was just jump on my VPN and move, you know a couple of hundred um, kilometers. But instead, I watched it with the millions of other available ways to watch sports ball. It's there. You know, it just really depressed me that, you know, you're trying to do something. It's not even trying. You know, I want to watch it the legal way. But mm-hmm. as I said earlier, there's... I'm going to watch it, and they need to get that through their thick skulls. I mean, even it comes down to me going to a bar or a neighbor's house or friends and watching it communally, that's fine. But, you know, guys, you you need to sort that. Internet does not work that way. The internet absolutely does not work that way. But do you think they'll figure it out, you know, before we're dead? Probably not. No. Yeah, well. Maybe after we've risen from the grave as horrible zombies, but then yeah. and only then. So, that's what we've been up to. And before we get into the Linux gaming news of this week, we need to thank someone, and that someone, his name is Ryan. And Ryan, you know, it's kind of weird that, you know, we get emails now. Yeah, that, that that's a new one for me. I wasn't expecting emails. Yeah, no, just out of nowhere, and they're not for the fun stuff, you know, like um, floppily, dingly bits, yeah. But no, Ryan wrote in, and he said, hey, just wanted to let you know that the HD RSS feed, he included a link, that's a good email, has mm-hmm. not been updating. And you know what? It hadn't been. No, not for like the past three episodes, and it was a snafu on my end for not naming something right that I should have been doing, because the transcoding software I use to re-encode the mezzanine file, which is the big, ginormous file that we end up with, Mm -hmm. into something more palatable, didn't put the right extension on it. Um, Thanks, Ryan, man. Good on you, sir. Appreciate it. Everything's updated. It made Jordan's day. It did. Now he I can, was so happy. Uh, he can watch himself in HD. I know. It's pretty it's good stuff, man. But, you know, there was um, a bit of Linux gaming news this week, man. There was. Yeah, just a little bit. And one of it almost incited a, a holy war, I guess. That's the only way I can describe it. And that's good old games. No Linux for you. Now, last month, the escapists mentioned that GOG, they're no longer good old games. It's now GOG. What do you think of that? GOG. I think naming them after proto-deities is a really good thing. But there's nothing wrong with your traditional proto-deity, but uh, for a company to go from, you know, GOG, good old games, to GOG... It's like, hey, let's go check out the GOG. The GOG? Yeah. It, it's snappy. It's, it, it's catchy. It works. It's got its moments. But, you know, last month the escapist mentioned that GOG, GOG.com, would be coming to a new mystery operating system, and that got a bunch of people excited. Now, in all fairness, they didn't say which mystery operating system and since it's I'm not a betting man, what's your take? Um, I, well, I know the answer, so I don't think I should really be guessing, but... But, um, pretend you didn't, but, and you were still living. Pretend, 
pretend I didn't, and I'm living in my idealist, happy rainbow land, I would say God would be coming to Linux in my wildest pipe dreams. Now, that's a good point. And a lot of us were, because there's tremendous love in the Linux community for good old games. There is, and we've blown up the forums and all that. But we kind of knew that it wasn't coming, though. I mean, is that fair to say? Yeah, I mean, you got to take that optimism with a grain of salt. I mean, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty much it. Yeah, and the reason we're excited about this, I mean, you're thinking, oh, good old games, yeah, most, most of that's in DOSBox and you can run it. No, they're getting into the business of selling new games, so that's why everyone was excited. But it turns out that it's um, for a Mac. For a Mac. For a Mac. What do you... Well, I guess the, one the, way... The, the other 5% of computer users. Right. Is it still 5%? Oh, I have no idea. But one way you can spin it, maybe after the development work with the Macintosh, uh, it'll be easier to get over to Linux, because if you don't get over to Linux, um, son, you're doing it wrong, because I think things are about to change. What do you believe? I, yeah, well, well, of course, with, you know, guys like Steam coming to Linux and Humble Games proving that there is market for Linux games or games available on Linux, you'd think it would be a smart move, but I mean, I, I guess, um, I guess, uh, Steam went the OSX route first. I don't know. I, I'm a bit disappointed. I, I, I like GOG. I, I, I like being able to purchase my old games DRM free and have them updated to run on, you know, modern systems. But, um, yeah. What's your take on that? I really think they want to do it, but they just don't have the resources to do it. But, you know, the, the whole thing, um, if we look over here, Back up just a moment. Um, it's the tried and honored excuse of there's too many distributions and it's too hard to support. And does that really hold water in today's age? Not really. You can, you can, like, hell, Skype used to do it. They, they used to have, like, a statically linked and a dynamically linked binary th package that you could just download and run. And it ran on most Linuxes. Yeah. So Hell, that, even 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 going back to the humble games, they do they do a similar thing where you, they just give you a tarball, or I guess these days an installer with just a regularly linked binary, and I guess I guess there's a statically linked. Uh, but yeah, you just run you just drop it in your bin directory and run it. And even if they went the route of, let's just use Ubuntu. Or Fedora, Arch, Arch. That could have pick, pick a couple of distros and just package it for it. Yeah, well, that didn't happen. Nope. No. But maybe next go around, they'll get themselves sorted in some manner that will prevent them from becoming irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Still, lots of love for the guys, man. You guys are doing great uh, work. I mean, I've emailed back and forwards with you a couple of times on some other things with some how-tos I've done. Very helpful, guys. Just Gotta, gotta love selling games without DRM. That, yeah. That's a plus. Like I said, um, just, you know, full metal penguin from here on out. Now, I believe you got the next story, though, and it's... it's yes, uh, talking about some good old games. You know, it's a good nostalgia game that I remember. Oh. Doom. 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 And a month, about a month shy of a year ago, um, John Carmack released the uh, Doom 3 source code. And uh, very recently, uh, they got it GPL'd. We have it right here. Um, what does it we say? We have it right there. Straight from the horse's mouth, got the approval for GPL release of Doom 3, BFG code, minus third-party bits, already done most of the work. So what's the um, third-party bits mean? Uh, probably some non-ID engine stuff. 
That's IP. It's one thing people get confused about is, you know, just because the engine is open source doesn't mean you can get the game for free. Yeah. They're, they're, the game companies always license bits and pieces of software just to make their games run better, because why well, try and reinvent the wheel? So. All right. And the majority of it's art assets. Yeah. Majority of it is. But um, this is really good news for stuff like uh, some Doom 3 mods that exist that can now become standalone games. Um, you mentioned a while ago the Dark Mod. Now, the Dark uh, Mod is a very interesting piece, and that's something that I think we're going to see a lot more of. Dark Mod is going to go standalone, and I think that's very important. I mean, still using the engine, but replacing all mm -hmm. of the art assets. Yeah, no, that that I'm I I actually like that. That's a pretty cool thing that they're doing. Uh, and I have to give them complete credit because I have never went from just genuine excitement when the um Git repo for Doom 3, the ID Tech 4 engine was put up to pulling the SVN and going from just Yay to no. Mm -hmm. Not touching that. <laughs> um, that's not me saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's so far beyond. It's like, I, I, mm, no. Nope, nope. No nope. moss. Have, no moss. Have, have you, have you seen, have you seen Carmack's, uh, trigonometry functions with like the random ass hex values that he pulls out of nowhere? Oh, yeah. I've, I've watched like, the, Everything Carmack does, I mean, fascinates the piss out of me, especially, you know, with what he did to get everything running on the PS3 with, um, what was the last, um, technology demo they released for their latest engine? Rage. Rage, right. And by the way, that, that's what ID does, id does. They release technology demos to sell the engine, and mm -hmm. we're still waiting on that rage. Open Letting. source port. Yeah. Or close sourced. Uh, Either way, man. Either way. But an another game that hopefully might be going standalone is Grim Quest for the Gatherer's Key, which is a sort of Mirror's Edge meets Skyrim meets. Look at this beauty. I mean, it. Yeah, looks... It, it looks it looks pretty. I, I I definitely have to give it a I have to give it a shot. And we'll play a little bit Run, of. You know, we won't, because there's an ad. Of course. Can you tell we do this live? Yes. Uh, let's take a look at some of these screenshots. In. I mean, it Screenshots looks... are almost as good as video. Almost. It, it's beautiful. But what's the game about? So, it's a bit of wall sliding, and... Is that it, or...? Fantasy hack and slash game with a lot of platforming elements. Seems interesting. Uh, Mirror's Edge, I haven't actually gotten a chance to play yet. But I heard some mixed thing about uh, first person platforming. I'm de I definitely do want to give this thing a shot, though. I definitely want to give it a spin at some point. Um, hopefully, it will go standalone. I'm more inclined to do something when I don't have to. You know, say Purchase. the magic Vol Volgon poetry in order to get the mod to work just right with Linux, because yeah. you would think a mod would work cross-platform. They don't. Not always. Not always. It's not our smoothest experience. But, you know, let's get ready to humble. Um, but not necessarily with games this time. We got something a bit different. What's a bit different about this one? Uh, we got we got some ebooks. Got some ebooks, and we got more ebooks on top yeah, of. There's a there's a lot of ebooks. You know, somebody went, "Yo, dog, I heard you like ebooks." So, yeah, we got some ebooks. And the only reason I bought this is because I'm kind of a fan of XKCD, and that was added, which I think at the time of purchase cost me about nineteen dollars. Not nine, yeah, whatever, about twenty nineteen. Something like that, but right yeah, now... Yeah, and some of, some of the proceeds went to build a school in Africa, I believe it was. Fantastic stuff. I mean, you get Neil Gay, man. Um, Scalzi, Doctoro. Corey Doctoro, kind of a fan of him. Like him. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, uh, they, they added the excellent collections from Zach Wiener's Saturday Morning Breakfast Cereal, including the book with, in my opinion, the best cover ever, The Most Dangerous Game. That sounds like good times, man. Hey, any any game involving riding bears and playing tennis with a stick of dynamite instead of a ball? That's good stuff, man. Uh, I really don't um, know how you play tennis. Well, it's not with a stick of dynamite, let me tell you that. So boring. Such a boring, so, boring life. But this is the most dangerous game. But that looks good. Uh, maybe, well, let's just face it. At time of recording, by the time you have downloaded and listened, or preferably watched this, it's probably going to be over. There's only 21 hours, 41 minutes left, but I always like to give these guys a mention because they are doing good work, and check it out, Average Linux, as always, 1614, Mac 1545, Windows 1324, which is higher than I would normally expect from the Windows yeah. crowd. I guess people really wanted that XKCD book. I, th I think that was the um, big thing. That, uh, that sold it for me. But up next, we have Relics of... I'm going with Anoroth. Yeah, that would be a good guess. Good guess. Well, what is this game? First of all, it's using U-Engine. Um... Which is a good engine. Did you ever uh, play Oil Rush? Nah, it didn't really look like my bag. Not really my bag, but at the time it came out, which is, what, two, three years back. Mm-hmm. It was really one of the best-looking games on Linux at the time. Yeah. And that's kind of something we want to say with this. Uh, right now, well, what is it? It's a medieval postmodern MMORPG just launched a medieval an... postmodern MMO. Yeah, you know, they they were going for, you know, maybe some you know like underground indie pre-modder, you know, thrash death metal um, accordion, but they they settled on this. Mhm. Mm that I'm saying it's a clever thing to do. But man, it looks nice. Let's take a look at some of these screenshots here. Check that out. Um, that looks pretty. Yeah, the, these are not concepts. You can get in the alpha right now, but... It's just a networking test at this point. That's pretty much it, and it's a very recent networking test. I mean, there's times when I've been the only person on there wandering about. Fun stuff, and like I said, it looks gorgeous. But, I want to keep track of this. What was that? But speaking of the fantasy stuff... Fantasy. Ah, right. Oh, you, I forgot. You can check that out at portal.nrfgame.com. Ah, that's right. Yes. Yes. You see, this is something we've been meaning to work on, is yes. during the show, say, the URLs of the sites. Were the, how many have we um, completely screwed over so far? Three or four now? Well, <laughs> really, only two of them had actual pages. Gotcha. But I think we said... Um, plus, plus, plus everyone knows where to get to the Humble and Bundle. Right, and good old games, GOG.com. I mean, we said that yeah. a million times. We're getting mm -hmm. better. We're, we're learning. It, it's going to we're take learning. us a while. Yeah, We're not professionals by any sort. Mm -hmm. But, but, let's but anyways, on. speaking of sword and sorcery... We have Savage XR... New, from New Earth, I mean, that's NewEarth.com. And 1.0 is out. Now, this is something that has been in works forever. I mean, to the point where I, I don't even remember when it started. But they have new, improved models, customized content, evolution with your characters. Because a lot of people think it's just a, you know, FPS. It's not. It's a real-time strategy game where you... You have to start with a basic unit and evolve your unit and then go kill and do all that fun stuff. Beautiful. Kill, maim, destroy. Ah, GUI additions, Python engine, game script, and modding. 78% more scavenge. 
Scavage, nice. Savage, Savage, and revamped editors, all that beautiful stuff. Absolutely, check that out at New Earth. Have you ever played Savage? Uh no, I haven't, but I have played Haunt. Ah, uh, Heroes of New Earth, yeah, same guys. Well, not the same, same guys. guys. This is more of a community project, and it's completely mm -hmm. free, by the way. No charge. There's no, you know, freemium that's, model. That's that's the best price. It, it's better than about Tree Fitty. It's better than Tree Fitty. Yeah. Check that out, like I said, at newworth.com. But, what? again, incredibly awkward segue. Speaking of free, uh, there was an interesting blog post someone threw up at freegamer.blogspot.ca wow. about monetizing open source games. I believe it was called Crowdfunding Games into Freedom. And just to read the little top part here, is two games recently started Kickstarter-style campaigns on Indiegogo with part of the offer being becoming open source. So, good idea, bad idea. I personally think it's a good idea. I mean, putting a lot of time and effort into games, it takes a lot of time and effort. Uh... But, um, I mean, like, the developers have every right to demand payment for their, for their time. And this is a good way that you can have your cake and eat it too. Fund the game and against GPLs. No, I like the idea, but do you think it's going to be an effective business model? I mean, what's your turnaround time for, you know, do you have any chance to sell the game? Or is it just all going to be Kickstarter? Then you just open source everything. Well, the uh, the article brings up a couple interesting points about how other ways you could monetize open games that are open source. Um, uh, the one the one I liked was open source the engine and then make, and then charge for content. No, I believe the game Nikki and the Robots was doing that. Um, yeah, great uh, German developer. Guy's rocking on by itself, and it's a physics platformer like most games are from the last year. And I think that works as a viable thing. Mm -hmm. um, Forgotto. Um, how about, you know, you open source everything, but, you know, you have maybe you could sell it as an app? Yeah, that, that, that's another one it brings up. I, I, I think people, when they think open source, they think you don't have to pay for it. But, I mean, there are companies that prove that you can monetize open source software. You just got to be creative about it. I think that's a very good point. And that's, I think, one of the stigmas that's been kind of nailing the Linux community as a whole is not only do we want to pay for things, chances are... We, we will pay for things. And we'll pay more. Mm -hmm. And, you know... I've said on previous shows, yeah, I own every Loki title ever made, which they'll probably be um, worth at least true pity in the future. In the future. As a collector's maybe, item. Maybe, you, yeah, you could sell it on eBay. Some other Loki enthusiast will be like, oh, gotta get me those games. Yeah, but how cool is it to have a Quake 3 Arena tin box with the system requirements with X386 3 point? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's cool. I think that's tragic. I think it's awesome. <laughs> so, anything else? Did we miss anything? Oh, uh, I don't think we did. I think we got everything wrapped up for this week. A bit of a short episode, admittedly. A little bit of one, but given the technical difficulties, we had to slog through. Yeah. It, it's there was a good three hours before we actually got to the recording part. Oh yeah, but trying to mess with experimental kernels and graphics drivers to get a desktop booting after a year of not updating. As we always need to mention, where you can find us, and that is that one little place that sparkly little gem on the interwebs. That's LinuxGameCast dot com. You can see uh, not the prettiest site in the world, but if you're listening to us, especially if you're doing it on YouTube and you want to find a more non-flashy way of doing it, 
check out our iTunes feed. We're on MP3 video. We also have standard MP3 SD and HD video downloads available. And you can always find this fine gentleman right, Mr. Jordan at the Burning Fool on the Twitter nets, the Twitterverse, and me, this horrible mug right here. Mr. Ben Stone at Ben Stone. Cleverly disguised, as always. Oh, you know what we forgot to mention? What did we forget to mention? We forgot something very important. Oh, right. Our Steam Linux update of the week. 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 And moving on. See you next week. See you next week. The following contains extreme explicit language and is entirely horrible. You have been warned. It also has um, possibly South Park spoilers and Walking Dead spoilers. Depends on what you watch. And welcome back to our after show. How unfortunate for you to have stuck around. This is uh, what we do after the normal show and before our after after show, which we're not legally allowed to record. So There is way too much nudity and bestiality. Uh, way too much. Teeth and nails everywhere. Beyond the allowed amount on the internet. And that's saying something. And kittens. But, you know, I did watch something just just for you, because I was thinking about you earlier today. Oh, dear God. I watched South Park. I, I hadn't been putting it off a week. I've just never had the chance this week. And I'm going to go ahead and say, man, that was weak. Yeah, I mean, they set the bar way too high. You get Sarcastaball, you get frickin' James Cameron and Skeddy Wrestling, and then you get the UPS Man, and then you get Kawaii. Come on. I think it's I, really devolving into the point of what pissed us off last week. You know, I, I think that trailer what, Matt what, what, went to Hawaii and dealt with this. Right. So I, I I liked last week's episode. I found that absolutely hilarious. Yeah, no, last week was fun. What I'm saying, I mean, that's the thought. I mean, it's like apparently Matt or Trey went to Hawaii and had that experience, and it's like, oh, let's just make a cartoon about it, phone it in. Mm-hmm. Um, Ghost Elvis. Did Ghost that of Elvis. Do anything for you? I mean, I, I'm trying to find some, if any, redeeming qualities. I, uh, you know what? It could have been a good episode. The seeds were there, but I don't think they ran with it. The one thing that made me not even chuckle, but I pondered chuckling was, you know, Kenny, Kenneth, riding home. Mm-hmm. I thought that was all right, but it didn't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that the when 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 he when he goes from the proper English to saying how hot that one woman was, yeah, that got a chuckle out of me. But yeah, but that was about it. I well, okay, when Butters killed the cruise ship captain with a golf ball, I was like, all right, that yeah, was all right. Yeah, uh, Butters. Mm. We had we had two Butters heavy episodes this this season though. I got something I wonder, in my front pocket for you. I wonder if they're maybe leaning on a bit too heavy, because they're really the only character... He's really the only character they haven't devoted entire episodes to... Well, they haven't devoted... Oh, they have, man. You should get some of these um, American Netflix. It's like even as they have their own Butters section of Butter Heavy. (laughs) Yeah. They recommended Butter... Like, here's a Cartman selection. Here's a Butters selection. Here's a question. What have happened to um, Stan's sister? Oh, whatever did that? I think I've seen her in a couple episodes, but you know what? I didn't like Shelly as a character that much. I didn't, but the only character I miss, and I think it has really um, cocked up the dynamic, is the lack of chef. The lack of chef. Where's our succubus? Can, can, can we really, given, given Isaac Hayes' departure, do you really think they could have replaced Chef? 
I know they could have replaced Chef because they did it after his departure in that last episode. I th- I think I think that would have run a bit stale, actually, mm. of just stitching together dialogue. It was funny at first, but by the end of it, it was starting to get a bit grating, at least for me. I think the funny thing is, when they were stitching together dialogue poorly, then at the end, none of that was recorded by Isaac Hayes. Oh, yeah. And they showed that, oh, we can do the entire thing. So, no more make love to me, woman. I want to sit you down by the fire. I just made love to you five minutes ago. What do you think I am, a machine? How are my favorite crackers this morning? Hello, children. Hello. See, I missed that. Hello, children. Yeah, but... uh, You know what? I like to go back to the older South Park episodes and reminisce of a time when... uh, when I didn't not respect Isaac Hayes as a human being. Sometimes, I mean, that's one thing I'm fortunate about with um, South Park Studios. After watching an episode like that, I can go back and watch something from ten years ago. Oh, God, it's been on that long. And wash the taste out of my mouth. One thing we haven't seen out of them yet is a presidential election episode. They usually cover at least one thing. Well, they did um, with the McCain-Obama, you remember the... Yeah, the the National Treasure thing. Yeah, I thought that was that was good, especially with Ike at the end. <laughs> Boom, baby. <Yeah. laughs> no, but uh, g- given, given all the heat about this year's election in your Michigan country... I'm I'm surprised. Maybe maybe they're saving it for after the election. Maybe maybe they want to see who's winning before they they write their episode. Yeah, I think there's no chance of us not getting one. We have to. It's they're they're like contractually obligated to do that or something. Yeah. So you've been keeping up with the Walking Dead. I have not. Shame. Probably not Shame. keeping up with Fringe either. Oh, you shut your mouth about Fringe. I'll get to Fringe eventually. Are you saving it when for the I, retirement home? I'm saving up time at home. And eventually, eventually, once I get off this crappy, crappy cable modem, I will download the entirety of Fringe and marathon that sucker. That sounds like a good plan. But, you know, since we're all going to die this December, eh, you're kind of short on time. You guys are going to die this September. This September. This December. <laughs> I'm going to still be kicking. Oh, you silly boy. You think I'm carbon-based? Yes. Yes, I do. Ah. Well, mind you, mind you, given those tits of yours, you might be silicon-based. you got some pretty big tits. Mm-hmm. How yeah. you doing? <laughs> Can I get your number, shorty? <laughs> no, that's fantastic. Um, Did we talk about the uh, sky jump last week? The Felix Baumgartner. Yeah, was that after our recording? I think that was, actually. Yeah, did you get a chance to check that out? I did not. Um, I have really, really bad acrophobia, so the idea of some guy jumping from orbit does not appeal to me. Is that where you're afraid of acros? I'm afraid of heights, you tit. Ah. Yeah, I don't have... the. <laughs> The same reason I got rid of a motorcycle after about three months of owning it, I immediately realized there's nothing in the back of my head that says, you know, going 120 miles an hour is a bad idea. (laughs) So I I tend to, you know, for my own personal safety, stay away from things like that. Because I was watching that and I was like, cool, I want to do that. (laughs) Yeah. It'd be awesome if he whipped out a phone and he's like, LOL, falling. You know, on the tweeters. <laughs> LOL falling and then he splats. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I think that's one of the um, more morbid things. I was like, he's going to leave the largest wily Coyote hole ever. No, no. What he needed to do was jump with like a sign that says, uh-oh. <laughs> maybe, maybe have like a crane suspend him outside of the pod just so he can hold it and then drop it. So just for the pause and comedic effect. What what if his like shoelace had gotten hung on the um, tower? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so many ways that thing could go wrong. Uh, yeah. But you know what? He 
Human broke the sound barrier by falling. That's yes, uh, Mach 1.2, I believe. Well, it can be done now. That's kind of awesome. It's a shame you didn't feel anything inside the pressure suit, but um, to kind of wind that into a bit of tech news, that was the largest um, simultaneously viewed thing, period. Eight million people watched that. Yeah, didn't that blow up? It blew up the Olympics. The Olympics had 500,000, and everyone was floored that that many people. But do you know what it was? Because you think, how many people live... I mean, I watched the Mars rover landing. I think I even sent you a link to that way back when. Yeah, no, no. Uh, The seven minutes from hell, yeah. And I was watching that entire bit live. As was I. That was real cool. It was awesome, but not a lot of people watched it. But I think that's one thing we're missing was that human element. Mm-hmm. We didn't send a man to Mars. Yeah, we the did. second we do, we that's going to... Need a meat bag. That's why I'm kind of hoping that little shiny metal object right now, if you're keeping up with your Mars studies, turns out to be like the top of a spaceship, because then we got to go. Then we got to go. Yeah. But really, really, do you want the governments of the world to get their hands on an alien spaceship? Yes. Well, then, I guess you hate living as much as I hate not living. (laughs) I think it would be hilarious. Because everyone will be going to space at that point. Oh, yeah. It would be a race to Mars. It wouldn't be a race to the moon. Race to Mars. What was and then, they get tram- uh, then the astronauts get trampled to death by Bugaloo. Steel Sky. Have you seen that? Steel Sky. Yes, I believe I have. With the Nazis on the moon, and they've been living up there this whole time, and they. No, no, of- that, that's that. Oh, I'm thinking of something else. You're you're talking about Iron Sky. Iron Sky, right? Iron Sky. Oh, watch that if you haven't seen it. It is so brilliant. Oh. There, there's points in that where you just clap like a retard Nazi- and go... Nazis on the moon. How can you go wrong? <laughs> there's no way to go wrong with that. And it started out as a guy, just kind of an independent film project. Yeah. On well, the internet I, I years would, ago. I mean, it was... I, I, I had heard about it years ago, and then when I when I saw the actual theatrical trailer, I'm like, wow, they actually made this thing. It was the Duke Nukem of movies for the longest time, but they pulled it off, and the first show, get this, was in Berlin. In Berlin, of course. Which is... Of course, huh? Just fantastic. Mm-hmm. So, do you got any other fun after-show bits you want to scream about? Oh yeah, speaking of speaking of Duke Nukem's of things, uh Winter Sun's album Time Part One came out and that was fucking awesome. I was waiting six years for that album and it kicked ass. You were jamming out with that the other night, man. I was because it's amazing. It's like orgasmic. Orgasmic. I still gotta check. Is it available for download? Digitally. They had it streaming on their site for a while. I don't know if it's... Uh, I'm sure it's up for it's, purchase, uh, though, right? Sorry, what? It's up for purchase. Oh, yeah, definitely you can buy it off uh, Amazon. Cool, as long as it doesn't come in one of those disc things, because I don't have any spinny drives anymore. I mean... Spinny drives. No, me trying to find... I, 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 I have love, some... I love those AOL-branded coasters. Well, yeah. I miss getting my free coasters, but, you know, finding a CD-ROM drive is, you know, the 10 years ago equivalent of finding, you know, a 1.44 drive laying around because you had to boot something before Uh. USB key. So you're jamming out with the new album. You like it? Oh, Oh, I love it. That's great. Cool. Um, It was not what I was expecting, but it was a pleasant surprise nonetheless. Hmm. And what about you? Anything else you want to toss in? Yeah, I don't have a whole lot going on. Other than hoping that this all goes smooth, I think we got plenty of overhead left, and we don't have some audio-video um, sync drifting issues. Nothing that can't be fixed in post, but that changes, you know, a six-hour project and turns it into, you know, a two-day project. So, Indeed, a two-day straight project. 
uh, you know, our Mr. Ben making sure you get your Linux game cast, mm-hmm. even if it kills him. We Especially ha- if it kills him. But we have fan. We have fan. We have many fan. <laughs> multiple of fan. And fan is just this one guy we've cloned multiple times. Yeah, it's kind of an ego. We, we, we were able to get a we were able to get a hair from Ryan, and we have a lab going. That's pretty neat. You should come by and see it sometime. Mm-hmm. But I guess that's it for us, because um, as always, we run a bit long. I do need to catch up on The Walking Dead. I haven't seen Sunday's episode myself, so I'm probably going to watch that tonight after I watch NSFW. And that's about it. So that's going to be the um, Mr. Stone, Stone, Vin Stone, at Vin Stone, Linux gamey casty guy, and... That Jordan Quang dude. Yeah, Quang. Why do you gotta throw that W in there, man? It should just be Jordan King. Kang. Kang the Conqueror. Kang the Jordan. But that's it for us, guys. We're waving at you. Good night. Don't get in a fiery wreck and die. Or else. Die in a fire.